เยอะเยอะเราโอเค Good afternoon ladies and gentlemen uh, Welcome to Thematic Poly's Hybrid Open House 2022 Okay Hope that you can hear us uh, loud and clear So good day to all of you who are tuning in from wherever, wherever you are and thanks for spending your Saturday afternoon with us My name is Lorinda and I'm with the School of Humanities and Social Sciences also fondly known as HSS In HSS we have three diplomas Early Childhood Development and Education, or ECDE, Social Sciences and Gerontology, or GEM, for short, and Psychology Studies, or Psych. In, and in HSS, uh, students and staff, we take work and play seriously. So we work hard, but also remember to have fun too. So while academic pursuit is important, all right, today we are going to bring to you school life and experiences from the student's um, perspective. And these school life and experience cannot be underestimated in shaping and building our identities. So today, in our segment of shaping today, uh, sorry, shaping tomorrow with heart, spirit, and soul, we bring you voices from our year three students, Zorel. Okay, say hello. All right. Hello. Hi, and Shamane. Hi, everyone. And Nadia. Hello. All right, so they will share with us how their school experiences in the different interest groups as well as clubs shape them. Okay, so if you have questions for our presenters, don't be shy. Use the chat box and get in touch with us. All right, so first up, we have Zuriel Sun, who is pursuing Early Childhood Development and Education Diploma, or ECDE. He is also the president of ECDE Interest Group which plans, organize, and carry out events for all ECDE students. I shall not steal his thunder, and over to Zuriel to share more about his journey in ECDE and TP. Take it away, Zuriel. Thank you, Ms. Lorinda. Okay, can you see my screen? Okay, hi everyone. My name is Zuel. Uh, I'm from the Diploma of Early Childhood Development Education at ECDE for short. And on behalf of NIEC Thermastic Polytechnic, I will be sharing a few a little bit more about my student life in Thermastic Polytechnic. So uh, as what Ms. Dominda has shared, I'm a year three student and I'm the, uh, the president of the Early Childhood Development Education Interest Group. Okay, so to wrap up my uh, early childhood experience over the past three years, uh, I am I actually uh, listed down four words that actually kind of like nicely summarizes what my learning experience has been like. So firstly, it has been a very fun experience, loving, nurturing, as well as eye-opening. So uh, I, let me explain to you why uh, I chose these four words. Firstly, fun, because I think uh, when you come to this early childhood course, there's a lot of hands-on learning experiences that you can look forward to. So some of which include, you know, how to change diaper for children, how to make milk for children, how to bath, bath a child. And you know, like, even like uh, having like uh, very cool uh, assignments where you are forced to step out of your comfort zone to really uh, try things that you don't really try in secondary school. The second one will be loving. I think as you go into the sector during your internship, your attachment, or even your practicum, uh, where you, you know, engage with the children uh, physically in the classrooms, you kind of find your passion for or whether you're calling for why you actually chose this course in the first place. And for me, I think I'm growing that love uh, for my children. And in a sense, when I have these mini conversations with them, it never fails to bring a smile to my face. Uh, and yeah, that's why the second attribute is love. The third one will be nurturing. Uh, I really personally feel that uh, early childhood has really many, many nurturing uh, 
lecturers and tutors who have constantly given me the opportunity to push myself further, to challenge my boundaries. And, you know, as I continue to find uh, my own phys- uh, personal philosophies as an early educator. So uh, through their support, I have constantly been given the opportunity to lead in events. For example, one of which will be taking on the leadership role uh, as a president of, of IDIG. And yeah, so uh, I don't think I, would def- I wouldn't be here if not for them. Yeah, the last one will be eye-opening. I think I came into this course without any expectations because, you know, I had this mindset where, you know, like what can you possibly learn? It's just teaching children aged 18 months to six years old. But I think I was really awestruck at like as to what are the behind the scenes moment every teacher has to go through, planning lesson plans, creating learning materials, and you know, having those very many, many mini considerations in mind, where even when choosing something as simple as a storybook. So yeah, this has been my early child experience uh, in a summary. Yeah, so uh, I wanted to share with you a little bit more about my leadership journey. So uh, I was in secondary school, I was also given the opportunity to lead in events. I was a prefect uh, in my secondary school days. And as you can see, it's actually a very big committee uh, where I went uh, during my secondary school days. And that kind of like didn't give me the opportunity to step up. And I think person, personally, I was quite rebellious. Uh, I, didn't, I was quite mischievous and very immature at the time. So I didn't really seize the opportunities to really you know, push myself uh, even more than I was given. Yeah, so uh, coming to uh, this course, this diploma in early childhood, I was given the opportunity to take on leadership roles in early child development education interest group, ADIG for short. So uh, I actually, this is my second year running it. Uh, the previous year, I was the vice president, and this year, I was given the privilege to take on the leadership role as the president. Yeah, so I'll share with you a bit more about what I've learned uh, in the upcoming few slides, but let me share with you a bit more about what ADIG is really all about. So ADIG is really a student-led course initiative where students are given the space to take on leadership roles and lead events. And through these events, we aim to give back to the community and support our peers. So as you can see, right, this, this is actually my two committees that I've been in uh, with. And although we are small, we are mighty, which, actually, which is actually what HSS is really all about. Although we are small, but we are very mighty. So in a way, you know, we are forced to constantly step out of our comfort zone to really plan events, especially during this COVID-19 situation where everything has to be go to be online and not physical. So I'll explain a bit, a bit more about what we do uh, in the next slide. So these are actually some of the community involvement that we were engaged in. The first of which will be the Little Schoolhouse Partnership, uh, where we actually had to collaborate with the little, little school house at Tamasic Polytechnic to host a Christmas Day event for the children. So it was very, it was, I think it's already tough enough to have a physical event with children. And now let alone having an online event where we can't even see the children uh, physically. And that, that was a struggle that we kind of had to face and like uh, work our way through. But I think uh, you know, as uh, as students, uh, you know, we always try to we always find a way through the toughest times. And in a way, through this uh partnership, we were given the opportunity to engage in script writing, which was something that was very different, uh, coming up with online activities that were age appropriate, yet uh, interactive with children, as well as uh, having finding MCs and like creating dance, choreographing our own dancers, dance steps to really engage the children in meaningful ways that we, we usually wouldn't be engaged in, if not for these experiences. The next one would be Tampines North Community Centre, where we actually partner with them for a Halloween event, and through this event, we actually help to like come up with simple craft and like uh, for parents to actually engage in. So in a, in a way, we actually try to uh, inspire people around us, inspire the community that we are in to really, you know, be like, like showcase what ADIG is all, ADD as a family is all about. You know, like having, coming, coming, forming simple ideas and to really just showcase just to inspire uh, like-minded people like us. Hmm. So some of the initiatives that we actually come up with uh, to support our students would be actually these two. These two are actually quite similar initiatives, just that it's focused, it's targeted at different uh, target audience. So the first one will be targeting uh, students from the uh, from who came who previously came from ITE, and the other one would be our males individual. So we felt that it was important for us to tackle these two groups because you know we may, like, in a sense, we want to create this non-judgmental space, this platform for them to reconnect. And it is important because, you know, like sometimes we may be facing similar difficulties, similar struggles, 
for example, I from IT to polytechnic would be the how do you transition from a school to a different school? I think that is still a struggle that we still face, even though we are, you know, at this age. Yeah, so in a sense, we also want to create this space and like let them know that, hey, you're not alone in this battle, you know, we, we are all together one big family in this uh, early childhood diploma. And yeah, so hence we come up with these uh, simple initiatives to really support uh, our students. So in these initiatives, we have games, we have reflection sessions, and we just have like heart to heart talks, which are actually very meaningful, especially for people our age. Mm. So now I'll be sharing with you about what I've learned uh, over my past two years in early childhood uh, development education interest group. So I think in the past, I wasn't very certain of what I want to do. And I was all, it's all over the place because I prefer to do things all by myself. But coming to, like in a sense, leading this new committee, I was forced to see things from different perspectives. I was encouraged to make better decisions after I analyzed the overall picture and like, see what is really best for my team. And I was also, uh, in a sense, encouraged to trust the process and my capable team that, you know, it's important for me to delegate tasks. I'm going to let you do it. I'm not going to interfere too much because I want you to lead as a leader. So in a way, uh, I have learned to try, in a sense, I'm constantly reminding myself to uh, let go and let them explore, let them experiment. Even though you make mistakes, I think it's perfectly all right. Yeah, I'm still working on it. I think there's still a lot of areas for me to learn and grow, but these are some things that I felt like I have uh, learned and improved on uh, in the past two years uh, as a, a taking on this leadership role. So to sum up my ADIG uh, experience, ADIG is really like a small family where I have made new friends and memorable memories. And in a, I have definitely no regrets joining this because I think it's really very fun having events on top of your assignments and that comes to my next part, you know, where how do I, uh, in a sense, how do I balance a healthy student life uh, in the midst of all of these challenges? Uh, you know, having your assignments, having your events coming up, having your personal life, how do I strike a balance between these three? And here are actually three simple tips for you to take on. Firstly, it will be time management. I think for me, I have, a, I have a, a calendar that I usually mark down the important dates of my assignments, when are they due, when are my events uh, happening, and in a way, I will often plan ahead of time. So I will start maybe one to two months ahead for my assignments and for my events planning so that there's ample time for me to re review and like improve my assignments, my events. And it also helps to give me the space for me to breathe, take a breather, to have some me time, uh, especially when it gets busier and busier each day. So the next part is really asking for help. You know, asking help from the from the community of love that you're in, which actually ties into the, to the third point where, you know, you're having this community of love. There's no judgment, you know, everyone is here together to really support each other, to have the best interest for each other. So I guess, you know, asking for help is not, and to me, asking for help is not showing your vulnerability. It is really showing that you trust a team to support you even though you may be struggling. And I think that's very important, you know, asking for help uh, for your assignments, from your lecturers, from your tutors, from your advisors, or even for your own committee, that, you know, that everyone is here to support each other and just wanting to keep, keep things going. Yeah, so with that, uh, you can all, you, know, uh, you can scan our QR codes uh, over here to follow our socials. So we are, we currently have our Telegram, our Instagram as well as our TikTok. Uh, they are having a lot of uh, things happening online. So, you know, if you do join this course or even in the, join the HSS family, right, you can always keep a lookout for upcoming events. And, you know, if you're interested, you can always sign up with us uh, through these social, social media platforms. Yeah, okay. So I would like to end off with a quote that experience is the teacher of all things by Julia Caesar. So I, you know, generally feel like, you know, as it's, a, it's really a, a, a learning journey experience for me. And as you become a teacher, you'll find out more about yourself, you learn more about yourself, what you really like, is it really what you want to do? And to me, I think, you know, just take the step of faith. Yeah. So this is all that I have to share. Thank you so much for listening. All right, thank you very much, Zoreo, for your inspirational and very personal sharing as well uh, of your journey with us in TP for this uh, three years. And the activities that uh, early childhood always have looks very exciting and fun and so it's very meaningful. Okay, so those of you um, who are interested to know more about the early childhood causes as well as the experience that they have, do drop us messages in the chat box and we will answer them in the Q&A session later, okay? All right, so next we have Charmaine. Uh, she's a 
year three students pursuing diploma in social sciences and gerontology. Uh, she's also the LEAD or lead ambassador, and she's also involved in GEM or gerontology uh, interest group. All right. And this particular group organizes the events for GEM students. So without further ado, I'll let Shemaine share with you her unusual path to TP. Thank you, Ms. Lorinda. Okay, let me share my screen. Okay, can you all see my slides? Okay. All right. One key, many doors of opportunities. Hi, everyone. I'm Shemaine. I'm currently a final year student pursuing my diploma in social sciences in gerontology, also known as GEM for short. I'm blessed to be able to share with you my journey here in GEM and how it has shaped me into who I am today. So you might be wondering, who is this girl speaking on the screen today? So let me share with you a little background of who I am and the path I took before I entered Tomasic Polytechnic. So back in 2016, I was thankful to secure my placing in GEM through EAE. So EAE is known as Early Admission Exercise, which students uh, can apply and receive conditional offers for admission to polytechnics before receiving their final results. However, I was a rebellious student who did not like studying or attending school. So in the end, I received 30 points for my L1R4, which caused my EAE offering to be revoked. So I was also not uh, offered any polytechnic courses as well. So for the first time, I felt so lost and confused as to what lies for my future. Then I applied to enroll into, higher, in, into ITE College Central in higher NITEC in events management. Instead of feeling negative, I decided to take this chance to learn and grow as much as I can through the different experiences in ITE. So I took on the position as the vice president in logistics for my interest group in year two. I was an active student who joined different events to build on my technical and soft skills. Nearing EAE application, my lecturers wrote testimonials for me and encouraged me to apply for EAE once again. That was the second time I applied for GEM, and this time I secured my EAE placing with a CGPA of 2.85. Entering TP, I really wanted to make these three years the best journey of my life. So here in GEM, I got different opportunities and exposures to gerontology-related knowledge and career prospects upon graduation. GEM offers a multidisciplinary curriculum for students such as psychology, sociology, marketing, applied social research, and many others. During my three years in GEM, there were different practical and hands-on opportunities to deepen my understanding towards older adults' behavior and needs. So one of the examples would be getting the chance to try on the aging suit, which helped me simulate the experience of what it's like being an older adult. So even um, the normal tasks that older adults do on a day-to-day -day basis, like opening the door, they actually face struggles, which the aging suit helped me to experience these um, struggles that they face. So students were also uh, provided the platform to collaborate with community stakeholders to design and implement programs towards healthy aging. I personally benefited from the practical and future-ready training from, uh, by the strong industry linkage. Um, in the health and social service sector. So with all these experiences, I felt strongly to bring forward my, ex um, my experience to the larger community. This sparked a thought in me to join a CCA, but I was uncertain of juggling between my academics and commitments. I approached my lecturer to share my concerns and she shared with me that it would be a great opportunity and I had what it takes to learn and grow here. Hence, it reaffirmed my decision to join and give GEMIG a try. So you might be wondering, what is GEMIG? So, okay. so GEMIG is a student-led interest group that provides opportunities for all GEM students to learn and apply skills in gerontology beyond the classroom. As a, a subcommittee member myself for two years, I got the chance to experience and help out in various events like open house and local community projects. It cultivated a sense of belonging for me in GEM and surely among other GEM students here. Furthermore, the opportunities developed and honed the students' leadership and interpersonal skills. It also strengthened my passion in learning more gerontology-related knowledge and planning events for the older adults. 
through the various events, we serve the larger community through different collaborations with partners like RSVP Singapore. So by working for the community, it inculcates a sense of social responsibility for GEM students to volunteer and learn and serve. So these experiences motivated me to run for the main committee role for this academic year. So words can't express how thankful and amazing my journey in GEM IG have been so far. The events and program allow different interactions across different cohorts. So for example, the picture on the top left was my very first local community project with GEM IG. It was a, a virtual terrarium class with Tembusu SAC, where we engaged with older adults in hands-on activity. It was a heartwarming experience when I interacted and saw smiles on the older adult faces. This also allowed me to meet like-minded individuals during my interactions with them during that event. So this academic year, I took on the role as the head of volunteer management in GEMIG. With nine other like-minded main committee members, the team is passionate to serve and the serve the GEM community we love and call home. We supported one another in our academics and provided moral support during difficult seasons through our study sessions and get to know sessions. So when someone felt down, there will always be someone there to listen to their personal problems and struggles. I felt that this was the best decision I've made for my TP journey because I knew that I was never alone at any point of my time. So as a committee member, I started initiating more events with my other fellow members. As of today, the team have initiated 14 events ranging from workshop to local community project. One of the most memorable events would be the collaboration with RSVP Singapore for National Grandparents Day 2021. Together with Ritzman, we were entrusted by our CCA advisors to be the event organizers in heading the planning for this celebration. During the planning phase, we were able to apply gerontology knowledge and skill from the classroom. So for example, the different interests and behavior of older adults and program planning skills to de design and implement activities like TikTok exercise for the seniors for this celebration. But I remember that it was a little tough for me as I was still on internship, but I had a supportive team who will always cover for me whenever I was busy at work. This team spirit is really what I admire during my uh, journey here in GMIG because everyone is so willing to extend their helping hand whenever you needed one. So currently, the team is working on the remaining events for this academic year and even planning for new ones for the upcoming year. So through GEM, I've achieved so much that my year one self never would have expected. I met one of the most caring and loving lecturers here who were always ready to guide me through my doubts or worries. One of which will be Mr. Goh, who nominated me for the Nian Kong Si Scholarship in year one. I am very thankful as my school fees were fully covered for the three years of my journey here in TP. It also gave me the opportunity to be part of the Temasek Leadership Program where they expanded my social network to students from other courses and school. The program also opened up more opportunities for me, such as representing TP in MOE Dialogue Session, joining Youth Corp Singapore Mission X, and even planning my very own service learning project. So all these experiences, as you can see on the pictures on the screen, it really nurtured my leadership and people skills, which I'm wholeheartedly thankful for. So looking back, I've never regretted the educational path I have took. It might have been longer than my other peers, but this experience was worthwhile. I forged the best friendships here and also got the chance to build on my character and leadership. For all the O-level, ITE and PFE students, GEM is really a place you can call home. There are so many opportunities for you to learn and grow at your own pace here. If not for all these experiences, I would not have been able to speak to all of you to, uh, today. So from a rebellious and purposeless individual, I've grown to become more confident, uh, become an empathetic individual and a strong team player. So I'd like to end off my sharing with a quote. Uh, it does not matter how slowly you go, as long as you do not stop. I would tell the lost and confused 16-year-old self about the amazing journey awaiting her. There are so many things to experience and achieve, as long as you do not give up at this instance. So, not to forget, you can follow us on our socials by scanning the QR code on the screen. We do post on a weekly basis to keep you updated on our gerontology-related knowledge and our student life here in GEM. 
this is the best three years of my life and I believe that it would be the same for you too. Thank you and see you in HSS and in Gen. Thank you very much, Hermaine. That was very honest as well as very touching. Like, oh my God, I also want to join the GEM uh, diploma now. <laughs> but I'm very glad that you didn't give up and you gave GEM a try again. Okay. Thank you so much, Shemaine. All right. For those of you, as usual, if you have questions for Shemaine or Zuriel, all right, put them down into the chat uh, so that you know more about, uh, so they can explain a little bit more about the experiences that they have uh, within the, you know, the three years that they are with us in TP. All right, um, and we will answer them later on uh, in the Q&A session, okay? So lastly, we have Nadia. Nadia is pursuing the Diploma in Psychology Studies. Um, not only that, she's also the president of the HSS Studies Club or HSSSC for short. So in case you are wondering, this club is not for studying, okay? But rather, it's actually a group which organizes the activities for all of HSS students. All right, so over to you, Nadia, for your sharing. Okay, thank you, Ms. Lorinda. Let me share my slides. Okay, can you see my slides? Okay, so let me start. So hi, everyone. As mentioned, I'm Nadia, and I'm also the president of the Humanities and Social Sciences Studies Club. So today I'll be sharing about um, different things. So just now the other speakers shared on some events conducted by um, respective interest groups and I'll be sharing on some HSS-wide events that are conducted for our students all year round. And also, um, it's not just for any specific course, but it's for students from all courses also. Okay, so two of our events that we have in HSS are freshman orientation and project coordinators. So from my experience, I was really able to make a lot, meet a lot of new people and make a lot of friends across courses and years. So I'm not just like uh, friends with only my classmates. And it just allows me to meet a lot of different kinds of people and make a lot of new friends. Um, also, it was really helpful in helping me to de-stress when I needed to, as I could talk to my friends and seniors and ask them for help or guidance in my work or just de-stress by like playing games and having fun together. So here are some pictures of my empires that I've had over the years and also some other empires that um, were created during freshman orientation earlier this year. So yes, I was, able, I was able to meet quite a number of people and I'm very happy and thankful for that. So we've also conducted like community projects that allow students to give back to the community. So for example, we had a food collection drive recently for beneficiaries and the underprivileged. So especially in this current situation with like COVID and everything, it might be a bit hard to, um, to go and volunteer because of the COVID restrictions, but this project allowed students and like um, all of us to just give back to the community during this period, even though it's like um, kind of an offline event. So we just drop off the food and donated it to our beneficiaries. Yeah, so we also usually have overseas community projects. So um, in 2019, I think we um, students went to Cambodia to help build schools and just help out in Cambodia. But unfortunately, it's not really ongoing right now due to the restrictions. But hopefully, when you join HSS, then it will be back. Then you can go to Cambodia. Yes. Okay, so moving on, I will also share about my course. So, oh wait, sorry, before that. So these are just some of the events conducted by HSS. And we actually have many more events throughout the academic year that you can join and just participate in to make new friends and meet new people and have fun with one another. And honestly, just make your entire poly experience a lot more fun and enjoyable. So it's not just academics all the time, you know? Yeah, so like, moving on, I'll be sharing about my course, which is Psychology Studies or PSY Psych in short. So um, I'll be sharing about the areas that we cover. So some of the areas that or sectors that, that is covered in our course include um, the social service sector, the special needs sector, uh, human resource, research and also various areas in psychology like developmental, cognitive and social psychology. We also have like, um, what is it called? Like criminal psychology, deviant psychology and stuff like that. So it's really interesting. And there's a lot of things that um, is covered in our course. So for our student internship program, it is conducted when we are in our third year. So I'm currently, I'm currently going through it right now. And there are four sectors that are offered in our internship. So it's special needs sector, 
social service sector, human resource and research. So we are able to state our preference and then we'll be allocated the sector um, for our internship and I was able to get the special needs sector. So on the right are some pictures of my internship so far and I'll talk more about it in the next coming slide. So currently I'm interning at Rainbow Center, which is a special needs school. So my assigned age group is four to six years old, meaning that it's a preschool for students with varying needs and uh, abilities. Yeah. So my task as an intern mainly include like conducting lessons, uh, facilitating and guiding students in their tasks and learning, and also um, like other ad hoc stuff like uh, preparing the classroom for lessons or just making lesson materials like visuals and tasks and stuff for the students and also communication systems. So, so far I really have learned a lot from the past few months that I've been working at Rainbow Center. So I was able to gain exposure to the different profiles of students in Rainbow Center, such as like students with higher needs or as compared to those with lower level needs, and also how different each student's needs are, even if it's the same diagnosis or something. So um, all the interventions that are given or activities that are, that are offered in the school are also personalized for each student from, um, okay, for example, like how an assignment can be, uh, it can be personalized in terms of the type of assistance given or the stationery that a student uses. So it's all like different and it's very individualized. And I feel that there's something that um, is very interesting and it's good that uh, is different for each person. So it really helps to um, guide each student individually. So um, I was also able to learn uh, how different uh, it is. Uh, like it's different on paper, how you would expect it to be, but it was really eye-opening and very um, fulfilling for me to work here. And it's nice to work with the students also. Actually, I would like to share an instance that I had when teaching at Rainbow Center that I feel is like quite cute. So um, some students might not really be able to grasp or understand some concepts like the current pandemic or like social distancing and stuff. It's just a bit hard to explain to them why they need to like, you know, stay away from their friends or not touch things or like sneeze without their mask, that kind of thing. So one of the ways that we tried to explain it to them was um, to put the mat on the floor. So you can see in the picture in the classroom, there's like this mat in the middle of the classroom. So we told them that the mat on the floor was actually lava and they have to avoid it and like they cannot step, at it at, step on it at all. And because like they think it's a game, so they actually tried their very best to avoid it. And it was really cute to see like they would jump over it or like squeeze through like different areas of the classroom to just really avoid the area. And it was really like cute to see them like do this throughout the day. Yeah. So I think these are the small instances that really helped to motivate me throughout my internship journey. And I really get to see the students learn and grow from their experience. And they're just also really cute. And I really like it. Yeah. But of course, um, this is just one of the placements for internship. And there's also other places that you can go. So it's not um, that the special needs sector is only limited to like preschools. It's also other schools offered and other areas and centers offered. And also for the other sectors mentioned earlier, there's a lot of, uh, there's a wide variety of places that uh, a student can go to for internship. So even if you're not interested in special needs, don't worry, there are other places that you can go to like research, human resource and social service sector as well. Okay, so overall from my three years in poly, I would say that the best way to cope with school so far is to always take note of these three things. So it's kind of similar to what Zuriel and Shamin shared earlier. So firstly would be to take note of all important deadlines. So I usually have a notebook for each semester where I write down uh, all the important deadlines that uh, any notes from lessons or even like my schedule for the week so that I'll be able to plan my time better and visualize my schedule. And next would be to be willing to learn from all experiences. So in school, of course, the main thing we do is like learn from lessons, right? But I think it's very important to learn outside the classroom also. So even from um, your assignments, your experiences, and from the people around you, it's very important that you're always open-minded and willing to learn and improve and like grow as a person. And next would, to, would be to um, have a good support system. So this would include my family, my friends, and also my classmates. So having people around you that you can rely on and have support from and also, you know, like talk about assignments. If you're like having a difficult time, then it's good to be able to talk to your friends. So over my three years in poly, I've been able to join a number of school events where I got to make a number of friends and can rely on them and go to them for support or even just to de-stress and uh, like just feel better when I'm stressed about school. So these really, I would say one of the big 
one of the biggest highlights of my three years would be the friends that I've made so far. And I'm very happy to be in HSS and I really feel like at home because I get to meet so many people that I feel so happy with and just share my entire polytechnic experience with. So with that, that's actually all that I'll be sharing today. Thank you and we hope to see you in HSS and in psychology as well. So do follow do follow us at our social media pages on Instagram and Facebook. And feel free to take a look at our events on our social media posts. And also you can reach out to us on Instagram and DM us if you have any questions. Also just like comment it in the chat box, right? Because we will have a Q&A segment today. Okay, thank you. Thank you very much, Nadia, for your sharing. You covered quite a bit on your HSSSC, the course, as well as your internship. So all these experiences are actually so rich because uh, you know, you're learning also beyond uh, the textbook as well as from the uh, formal learning. All right. Thank you so much, uh, Nad uh, Nadia, Shemaine, as well as Zuriel for your heartfelt stories. The stories really embody what HSS is all about, heart, spirit, and soul, and a love for the community as well. All right, so I'm going to bring Zura, Charmaine, as well as Nadia back, and we're going to have a short uh, chit-chat session with them. So for those of you um, at home uh, viewing this, please, if you have any questions, you can put them in the chat box, you know, and then we'll ask them while we have, uh, you know, while we chat with the three speakers that we have today, okay? All right, Charmaine, Zura, as well as Nadia, thank you so much for taking uh, some time off your very, very busy schedule to come and talk to us and also contributing back to uh, HSS Open House. All right, actually, I think uh, a lot of, um, probably something that's on the top of uh, people's minds would be, oh my God, you have so many things that's going on uh, in your life. So what actually motivates you to want to continue taking on of uh, the events as well as the activities, you know, I'm pretty sure they don't take a little bit of, just a little bit of time uh, from your busy schedule. They probably take up quite a huge chunk of um, time. So what, you know, what makes you all want to carry on with, with this? Um, so maybe can, can I, you know, direct this question to Zuriel? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, I think for me, uh, what really motivates me is, you know, uh, at the end of the day, there is this new learning, learning experience that you are given. And to me, I personally find like when these experiences or this opportunity arises to me, right, I, on, I want to make full use of it. I want to try and reach to my full potential to push myself, my team to, you know, to, to just break boundaries and like, you know, just try experiment, you know, if it works, it works. If it doesn't, you no, know, just so be because it's just really about the experience. But I think at the end of the day, you know, like when I have events, uh, like for example, the one that I shared earlier about the Christmas event with Little Schoolhouse, uh, that event, you know, when I when we were on Zoom, although not physically, when you see the children just engaging in your activities, planning, like just having fun with the activities you plan, I, you know, it just like gives you a big sound of really like, wow, it works. <laughs> and in a way, you know, it really like helps to motivate you to like, wow, how about we go round two, round three? How about a few more rounds with the children, you know, although we don't know them personally, but just seeing that, that beautiful smiles on their faces, just having fun in something that we plan, really just makes it all worthwhile and it keeps us motivated. Uh, and I think that's something very special about early childhood because if you do not have the passion, I think, uh, if you know, if you hear my lecturer say this or if you come for open house, you'll hear that, you know, you need a passion for children to, you know, to really love them. And yeah, I think uh, for me, I personally, uh, when I see that the smiles are there, it just helps to brighten my whole day up. Yeah. All right, thank you, uh, Zuriel. So the little kids' uh, smiles are all that, all you all need to carry on and be motivated. All right, how about Shemaine? Hello, okay. Hello. I think like what <laughs> Zuriel shared, <laughs> mine is on the other spectrum. So mm -hmm. mine is towards the older adults. <laughs> Yeah, so for me, um, with the rise in aging, um, aging population trend and all, actually most seniors, like some seniors are residing alone. So all these different events and opportunities for me, I feel that it's a way to impact their lives, to really, you know, engage them and really, you know, they are not alone. Like are, there's always someone there for them. And then for personally, for me, is a growth. I feel that each event is a stepping stone for me. Um, it's a way that I can grow and learn because without all this, 
I would not be able to share my story just now and everything. So I think all these, yeah, like chances don't come easily. La. It comes and then you have to grab. If you miss it, then it's okay, next person. <laughs> yeah. yeah, I think that's what we I agree. So sometimes if the opportunity presents itself, it's just take it and then see where it leads you to. Yeah. Thank you very much, Shermaine. Okay, how about you, Nadia? What also, you know, motivates you to carry on as a president of HSS Etsy, which actually is a very big responsibility because you oversee uh, all the HSS students, not just JAM, uh, early childhood or site. It's all of them. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think for me, something that motivates me would be like my experience in year one. So when I was year one, I feel like the seniors really did a lot to make sure that the juniors are very comfortable and feel very at home in HSS. And having that experience of like feeling comfortable enough to share about myself and uh, be who I am in school really helped me to open up and grow as a person. So I wanted to do that to the juniors as well and make sure that they, are, they feel at home and comfortable also. And of course, like especially with COVID now, it's a bit harder to um, interact and socialize with people. So I feel it's very important to make sure that uh, the students have opportunities to bond and meet other people. And I think that's something that I would say like all of us want for like our juniors also. Like when we talk and stuff, we would all like agree that we want our juniors to enjoy school. So it's something that motivates all of us. Yeah. All right, thank you very much, Nadia. That sounds good. Okay, I'm going to direct the next question to Zuriel. Okay, Zuriel, actually, you are one of the rare, you know, like a minority in a female-dominated uh, profession. So what are some of your learning or challenges that you face uh, when, you are in, when you are in ECD? Uh, yeah, okay. Uh, hi. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think, uh, yes, it definitely comes with tr tr struggles, uh, Firstly, because, uh, you know, as I shared here, like, secondary school, if you read the photo, like, it's all boys. And then, you know, coming from a background with, like, basically 10 years of my life, uh, being a, from a boys' school, uh, coming and then coming suddenly into a girls' dominant course, I think it was a very huge jump. And I wasn't able to, like, transit very well, as well as I wanted to transit. And that was one very big thing that I really struggled with. Like, you know, just trying to open up, like, not be shy around girls. I think it's just, like, a guy's thing. <laughs> yeah, so, like, you know, like, just, like, like, just trying to be yourself in the midst of not trying to be shy. And, like, you know, like, yeah. So, that's one thing that I struggle with as a student. And I think, you know, uh, as the, I thought you said, like, it is, it is a girls' dominant industry. And there are some things that, you know, the guy, like, in a sense, males can't do in early childhood setting. Like, for example, uh, routine care, which includes, like, toileting, uh, bathing, uh, bathing a child, as well as, like, make, uh, maybe, like, feeding might be still be okay. Yeah, but then, uh, like, oh, yes, also no, like, a physical contact, like, hugging or, like, letting the child sit on your lap. So, these are some things that are, like, no one says, like, no, no, like, you can't do this. And in a way, it is quite, uh, in a way, to me, sad because I also do want to embrace, uh, like, children's love uh, through physical, physical touch in a way. But I think that there are rules for a reason, and like in a sense, it's just meant that it's, it's there for it's just it's just there to keep us safe, lah. Yeah. Uh, on the whole, I think it's been a very exciting journey. Uh, being a male educator, uh, in this sector, because you know, I feel like there is a need for more males to join the industry because, um, some children, uh, may not have this fatherly figure at home, this male figure to look up to, and it is important. It's crucial for more male individuals, you know, to step up and, you know, like in a sense to show that this is how a male, I'm, I'm the male role model in my early, in my children's life. And this is how I do it. Yeah. And so I think, you know, a true uh, role modeling uh, in the center with more males coming in, uh, I'll just, you know, I think just encourage you to you know, just embrace because I think it is very important for us to have more males in the early child sector. Hmm. I totally agree with you there, Juro. I think it's always important uh, children get exposed to the different type of people, uh, you know, especially when uh, early childhood educators are the people that uh, other than family, they will see the most. All right. So if let's say you were to, you know, encourage our audience here to join uh, this early childhood sector, what would you say to them? I would say come with an open heart. Uh, come with no expectations because... For me, 
I was mind blown. <laughs> mm. uh, learning the different modules, like learning the different theories, learning the different hands-on skills. And then, you know, really like, wow, there's so much things to do at the early years of a child's life. So, you know, really just come with an open mind, open heart. And then, you know, ne- never fear, or in a sense, don't back down when a challenge arises. Because there are many times where you have to step out of your comfort zone. For example, like, I personally do not dance, I do not sing, but <laughs> I have caught myself dancing and singing countless of times in front of my own peers, which is quite embarrassing sometimes, you know, like, very awkward. Yeah, yeah but, <laughs> yeah, so, like, I think, you know, just really come, be ready to learn. Like, like, like what Nada uh, shared earlier, like, you know, have this mentality to learn. Come uh, with an open mind, open heart, and then, you know, just embrace whatever there is to come and just be yourself, yeah. Right, very good advice there. Well done, Julio. Uh, all the best for the early childhood, you know, sector as well as your support group for, um, uh, you have a support group for the males and the early childhood diploma, right? Yes, definitely. I yeah, I think we're having an event on Monday. Yeah, so it's actually quite happening and like. <laughs> I yeah. think that's a I think that's a really great initiative. Okay, well done. Mm-hmm. All right, so okay, next question that I have is uh for Shermaine. Okay, Jermaine, you applied twice for GEM diploma, never gave up, Perse- uh, you persevered your way. It's not just a couple of months, but it's really years, right? Is it one, two years? Yeah. So, and within that one or two years, uh, actually the diploma name has changed, um, but how did it impact you, if any? Okay, so... Um, previously, the very first time when I applied for EAE, the course was uh, named as Gerontological Management Studies. So that was more towards a very business element and all. But most of the core modules are still similar. However, for this second round, which is the batch that I'm currently in, we are actually the first batch of the revamp of social sciences in gerontology. So we uh, venture out to more of like the the social sciences, there are new modules uh, added in like public health, aging and illness. So there are like different elements. So to me, uh, I'm a very business oriented person. So I like uh, modules like marketing and all. So I did struggle a little um, trying to understand like those um, term, terms and all. Uh, but I would say that um, these are new learning experience for me, which I'm very thankful for. Uh, yeah, so two years, yeah. yeah. It took me a while to get back to Jam, but I think the ride was a good one. <laughs> all right. Well, then, so definitely no regrets, right? I mean, from your presentation and all, it's like you made the right choice uh, and you stuck with it. Okay. Well, then, Shermaine. Uh, Nadia, okay. So you chose, um, you chose uh, special needs specialization for your internship. Was there any special reason why uh, special needs? Um, I would say that I'm actually quite interested in social service and special needs sector because I feel that personally I would want to be more of the like how to say first la first hand I don't know how to say like I want okay. to directly help people mm. yeah mm. so I thought that social service sector and the special needs sector would be something that I would be interested in and from the modules that we've had uh, we were able to learn more about the sector and how that how um it's it really does like help people you're really impacting and contributing to someone's life and i really want to do that in the future so out of the four sectors that were offered um i chose special needs first because i wanted a more narrow um sector as compared to the larger social service sector yeah so that's mainly why i chose that sector all right okay thank you very much and you're doing very good work with the internship uh at the internship uh, place are you, are you still with are you is your internship still continuing is it still currently going on yeah it's still ongoing until february so it's about four months about four months all right thank you very much Nadia. uh zuriel we have questions on ecde okay so uh the first question is what are the requirements to get into the ecde course uh I think for one of the requirements is that you need a minimum requirement for English would be B3. Yeah, and then uh, I think the rest of them, yeah, not very sure. <laughs> yeah, uh, let me check the student handbook and get back to you. But like, I think basically, yeah, you just need the, the basic requirements. But uh, yeah, for, for what I know, I know you, for definitely the, the English has to be a B3. 
But you know, even if you do not get a B3 for English, you don't have to worry about it because over the three years, uh, there, are, there's, there are ample opportunities for you to either retake your O-levels or go for another program that I'm also not very certain of. Yeah, but like basically like there's this uh, easier way, it's like in a sense, but, but I just shared that it was like an easier O-level kind of like English exam. So once you have cleared that, right, then in a sense, you are ready to go and teach uh, in the early childhood sector. Yeah. Mm. All right, okay. And what are the areas for specialization in early childhood? Uh, areas for specialization in the early childhood? If, if there is any. Uh, yeah, there are. So uh, some of which will be including, so uh, basically when you graduate, right, there, there will, you receive this thing called an L2 certification. So basically L2 certification means that you can teach children from 18 months all the way until six or so. But if you do not wish to be in the teaching sector, that's all right, because you know you can go and specialize in like speech therapy, occupational therapy, uh, or even further studies in SUSS, where there is uh which is a, where, where there's like uh, I think a bachelor course for uh, the early childhood again. Yeah, so you can always you know like the, the doors are wide open for you to co- co- to continue to study to venture out into the different aspects. Because I think there are many diff- different areas that we can continue to continue to impact the different lives of children. Yeah. That's true. So it's the, the pathway is definitely not just to educate in terms of early childhood, but also in other pathways as well, like uh, definitely. Yeah, yeah. The art therapy and speech therapists and so on. Um, correct me if I'm wrong, Zuriel. For ECDE, uh, there are hardly any exams because a lot uh, of it is coursework. That's right. So actually, uh, early childhood has no exams at all. So maybe mm. there might be like that. Yes, it's a big yay. Yeah. <laughs> yeah so. <laughs> Uh, like, you know, when you come to this course, there's really no exams. And then uh, th- maybe there might be like one or two class tests. Uh, and then uh, following which will be more of like assignments, which are actually very tailored made, tailored uh, made into the way that it helps to, in a sense, prepare you for like classroom real life settings, that kind of thing. So for example, there was this assignment where we actually had our, we had to role play uh, as teachers and then our peers would be children. And then what we had to do is actually we had to read a storybook to the children using puppets that we create using props that we make. And then, so, you know, in a way, it helps to really push us out of our comfort zone to really challenge us to, uh, you know, like, what if we are in the early childhood setting? This is what we're going to do. This is how we're going to read the storybook. Not just reading like, uh, this is this is, this is is Jack, this is Tom. You know, this this is Jack. So, like, you know, we use, uh, we really apply all of our different skills that yeah, we so you need to in animate. class. <laughs> yeah, and I think it's very fun. It is very, very fun in early childhood. And, you know, if you are someone like this, you want to explore and, like, experiment and, like, go out of your comfort zone, early childhood is definitely the cause for you. Yeah. All right, all right. Thank you very much, Zura, for your explanation mm-hmm. and clarification. Okay, so I think we are nearing um, our one o'clock time, all right? So maybe... um. And this is about the, the amount of time that we have to share um, what the students have to share about HSS as well as their diploma uh, with you, the audience. All right, so before we go to close off um, this session, I'm going to just call on Shemaine, Nadia, as well uh, as Zuriel to maybe just have um, in one sentence, okay, why should anyone come and join either HS, uh, join your course or come and join HSS in general? Um, okay, Jura has said quite a bit. How about we move on to Nadia first, then we'll, we'll circle back to you, all right, Zuriel? Uh, Nadia? Okay, in one sentence, why should we join HSS? I think mm. it's very hard to sum up an entire experience in like one sentence, but I would say it's a very, um, like whichever course you take, right, I would say it's a very comfortable and like heartwarming experience because it's, you are helping someone whichever course you're in, you will contribute to their lives. And um, in HSS, the experience is very, uh, oh, in HSS, the experience is, is, you just feel at home and you'll be very comfortable here. So yes, join HSS. All right, thank you very much, Nadia. All right, Shami, what about you? What's your plug? I think similarly to Nadia, it's very difficult to sum up in one sentence, but I would say that um, as a HSS as a whole, it's really like home. Then when we dive it down to JAM, JAM, because the course is just less than 50 people, 
really you can walk and then you know one another. You'd be like, hi, hi. And it's so homely and yeah, it's really a great experience. And actually we are the only course that offers gerontology in, um, in the whole of Singapore for right. polytechnic. So yes, that is a good selling point. <laughs> All right, thank you very much, Charmaine. All right, so Zuriel, we have you to kind of round up, sure, okay. round up so, everything. Uh, <laughs> I think for HHS, uh, you know, when I first came, I, was, I felt really home. Like, although I was new, I was at home because like, it, this is, we are the, one of the smallest schools in Tamasic Poly. Mm -hmm. And when you get there, like, you know, it's like, wow, everyone kind of knows each other. And like, we are just one big happy family. And then, you know, uh, of course, uh, for early childhood, it definitely takes a big heart and big mind to nurture the lives of young ones. So you definitely feel at you you definitely attain the feeling of fulfillment from being in this course. And yeah, so with that, uh, I think you know if you really want to have to find that very special kind of love in your heart, come and join us, and you'll be ready to get blown away. <laughs> All right. Okay. That's a great roundup for uh, what we have today and in our little webinar. Okay, remember our webinar, it's called Shaping Tomorrow. Yeah, Shaping Tomorrow with Heart, Spirit and Soul, which generally also stands for HSS. All right. Okay, so before uh, we say our goodbye, okay, we're going to have um, our, uh, the last slide, you know, and, uh, and these are some of the talks which we had uh, which we have over the open house from Thursday till Saturday. All right. So if you would like, you could scan uh, the QR code for more virtual talks All right. to learn more about uh, gerontology, psychology, as well as early childhood. All right. Because we have covered today um, more or less the students' perspective, their experiences, their internship, um, the interest groups and so on. So if you would like to know more about maybe the academic portion and uh, you know, uh, entry requirements and all that, so please take out your handphone and scan the QR code with a little dinosaur on it. All right? And the dinosaur will take you to all the other, um, the other talks that we have. All right? Okay, thank you so much everybody for joining us this afternoon. All right, um, and you know, we, we are very grateful for all of you who are tuning in and staying with us for the entire hour. So thank you so much. And from us here in, the, in our little studio, okay, we hope that this webinar has actually given you a better idea of what you can look forward to in terms of school experience uh, with TP as well as with HSS. All right. So thank you so much. All right. From all of us, Shamin, Nadia, and Zuriel, as well as me. All right. Thank you very much, everybody. And bye-bye. Uh,